Hey y'all, it is me, Laura, and it is time for our first ever unit study collab. And I know, I think I had mentioned that the first one was going to be farm, but there were actually several people, myself included, who felt like we'd be ready for the farm next month, but we wanted something different this month, and at home we have been doing um, underwater oceans and seas and that kind of stuff and that's what Samuel has been really interested in and there were actually several other people who were like hey that would be perfect for me so we are switching it up next month we're gonna do farms and this month we are sharing things about water oceans seas and the like and for my son he didn't just want to learn about ocean animals he wanted to learn about creeks and those kinds of things so we have started with the water cycle and how the water gets to the ocean and then we're going to start with the shallow ocean and then we're going to move to learning about the Arctic Ocean because he's very interested in that and it's a little bit different there. And then we're going to learn about deep ocean and submarines and all of those kinds of things. So that's kind of how we're sorting our unit up and there is just so much fun stuff to share with you. but. Um, I'm going to start by sharing a few ideas. Um, one of the first things, obviously, if you can go to an aquarium, if you're studying ocean underwater, aquarium, a beach, any of those kinds of things are great. But if you don't live near any of those places, the Tennessee Aquarium actually has several webcams. And the cool thing is, one of our favorite things to watch is the otters. And... Um, I will put a link to those webcams below and on the Tennessee Aquarium website you can also find out the times when there will be people doing animal enrichments or um, special shows with the animals. And with the webcams you can't hear what they're saying but like for example with the otters when they have enrichment time the otters are really active because they've got games and things going on so it's a great time to watch them. They have penguins and otters and um, alligators and they even have some of just the big shark tanks and other things like that so it's a great resource a wonderful thing and like I said I'll put the links below it's something we've been enjoying of course just learning about any kind of animals is fantastic using water tables or sand tables we're gonna be pulling out just a big lid from a huge like underbed storage container we're going to put sand on there and put water with it and watch and see, build our own waterways and look to kind of see how rivers flow, um, things like that. We've made boats, little paper boats, and let them flow down to just learn about flowing and how water works. I don't know if you're familiar with the Planet Earth DVDs. Their documentaries are about 45 minutes long each, so you might want to break them up if you use them at all. But they've got a whole series called The Blue Planet, which is all about the ocean and water. And you can watch each episode, you can rent for a week for $1.99 on um, Amazon Instant Video. Turn the lights down and make it all cold and snuggle, snuggle under the blankets and pretend like you're diving while you're watching one of those or, you know, whatever would be most relevant. That would be a really cool way to learn about the ocean. Also, we uh, got a microscope, which I'll be doing a review for you on that. Um, and we got some pond water and looked at it under the microscope. It was only a $25 microscope. Like I said, there's a review coming on that. But um, it also came with some brine shrimp and a brine shrimp hatchery. So we're going to do that and learn a little bit about brine shrimp and um, we'll be doing a little bit about creation on the fifth day. I'm going to make a book for CML that'll be called On the Fifth Day and for each page it'll just say God made and then we can find pictures to cut out or use stickers or, or do whatever and so it might say on the fifth day God made dolphins, on the fifth day God made fish, on the fifth day God made otters. I mean I don't know whatever whatever we put in the book. Um, and so that'll be something that Samuel can can read himself. And of course, we're going to be doing experiments with floating or sinking, which is pretty common. But a fun way to do it is to have a few different containers. I have the first one with just plain water and then have two or three more where you progressively add more salt and see how that affects the way that things float. And you can talk about how the ocean is salty and how rivers and lakes are not. Of course, there's tons of books, tons of things you can do with all of the animals in the ocean. Um, um, we're going to try and do some measurement activities, especially measure how big a blue whale is. And we might um, go down our street and do some large measurement activities to see how deep different animals swim in the ocean and how 
deep the ocean can be. Um, there's just so much that we have planned. I haven't even gotten it all finished, but that's kind of some of the things that we've been doing, some of the things they've been enjoying, some of the stuff that's been going on. And now I'm going to show you just a few resources, some books, some other things that um, you might be interested in for your study. Okay, this was an introductory book that we used to kind of explain how the water gets into the ocean, how it how it all works, especially since Samuel was interested in rivers and creeks and how that all connects. This was a really great book that just kind of shows the water cycle and shows how water flows downstream. And anyway, it seemed like it was a really good introduction to kind of answer those questions for him. And so we really appreciated having that. This book he has been loving and reading. It's um, Us Born First Encyclopedia of Seas and Oceans. And it has so many different things in here. Let me show you. Here's a table of contents. Corals, rays, whales, different animals, tides, coasts, sea life. It's got um, diving, going under, like just shipwrecks. So many different things. And one of my son's favorite has been this page here where they talk about living underwater. And you can actually print this picture off. So he had me print this off online this picture of this underwater living area and he's been carrying it all over and telling everybody about how he wants to someday live underwater so this is great because there are links to more information which have been really helpful and there's pictures that you can anytime there's a star like this like it's a picture that you can download and use yourself so if you need any underwater images this is really great too and it's just it's really basic and simple and I find that for Samuel it's not too much information but it's enough to really get him going and then any of these topics that he's particularly interested in it's easy for us just to um, go to the library and get more books or look up on online find more things out about it so that's um that's been a really great resource this game if you haven't seen it it's a really fun game it talks about the um, the food chain and it's kind of like a glorified version if you're just playing two of you it's kind of a glorified version of war um, with some twists in it but if there's more people it's a fast-paced game that's really fun um, it says age of six and up but um, I think you could do a little younger and I think older kids would have fun but basically you have these cards based on the food chain and you just like in war you can get the cards that are lower all the cards that are lower um, if you're playing with more people it's very fast-paced um, if you're just playing with two, it's just like war, but there's also um, an ink out by an octopus, which nothing can happen because there's ink in the water, and there's also an eel, and when the eel is played, it's a feeding frenzy, so it doesn't matter where you are on the food chain because everyone is shocked by the eel. So it's a really fun, cute game. You can see here some of the cards, um, and it just helps to teach a little bit about um, the food chain and um, just a great little resource. Um, and I have this book to show you. This book is great. There's um, there's other ones that I like in some ways better and other ways whatever. But um, learning about Jacques Cousteau is a really great thing during an ocean water or underwater theme. Samuel has been so interested in Jacques Cousteau and diving in general. And he's done so much to help us learn about underwater life. Um, that this is just a great little a great story and explains a lot of how we're able to even explore under the sea. So um, he's someone that's definitely, there's all kinds of books and all kinds of resources on Jacques Cousteau, but someone definitely to kind of bring it to life for kids. And then this is a game that I have made and it's kind of in process, but I'm happy to share if you guys are interested the link to the Google Doc that I've got this on um, to see. But this is level one of the game. I hope to make other levels. I've started. I don't know how far I'll get. but. Um, it is a logic slash pattern game. These are patterns. You can see here, there's a pattern here. And whenever you play, there's a diver and, a, um, and an octopus. And the diver will close their eyes and pick up a strip, and lay it out, and then the octopus will take a little piece of Play-Doh and ink out one of the pictures. And then they have the diver open their eyes. And then the diver has to guess, okay, here's a goatfish array, if this one's covered, Goatfish, ray, ray. So what's that going to be? Goatfish, ray, ray. Okay, it's a ray. And if they get it right, the diver gets it right, they get to collect a shell. And um, if they get three right in a row, then there's a double ink out where someone gets to cover two of them and then three of them. 
And anyway, the rules are all there, but it's just a way, and then basically they can dive deeper into deeper levels. And these are all actually animals that are in the sunlit level of the ocean. Then you go deeper to the twilight zone, and I've started working on those, and I haven't really gotten much deeper. But then there's also the pictures of what they are, just to kind of, if someone's stuck and wants to see what their options are in um, finishing a pattern, they can kind of see. But that was just a fun game that I made um, that, I, that Samuel's really excited. I just finished it the other day. Um, just to kind of practice logic, practice patterns, and practice whatever. So those are some of the ideas that I've had for the underwater and ocean unit. I would love to hear what you guys are doing and what you have planned. If you have any videos that you would like to link in this collab, let me know and I will put it below. And I hope that you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.